This is the tournament I look forward to every year of all the golf tournaments. So, of course, we had to bring in Gil Caps from the Golf Channel, also with NBC Sports, because there is a very familiar name at the top of the leaderboard, Gil, and we got to talk about Phil Mickelson. He's just carving up the course in these two days. Well, first of all, I, I hope that Mike is actually at home taking a nap, that, that he was up at 1.30 in the morning watching our coverage, and he lasted <laughs> all 13 hours today. So I hope that's the reason he's off. But uh, Bill Mickelson, you know, right, age 46, right there at the top of the leaderboard. Um, what a huge story it would be for him to win two uh, of these uh, British Opens, or open, Opens as they just call them over here. And uh uh, in the UK and in most of the world, um, you know he boy he he looks so good the first two days. You know I sit beside Johnny Miller uh, a lot of the time, and, uh, and and Johnny said you know he couldn't remember Phil, you know on, on Thursday hitting the ball as well as he did uh, tee to green. You know he hit eighteen, I mean he hit sixteen of eighteen greens in regulation and was. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know how you how you describe it other than he was just, you know, a, a razor thin margin away from that putt dropping on the seventy second on, on the eighteenth hole and and becoming the first player in the history of golf to shoot a sixty two uh, in a major championship. I, I I think the question with Phil though going forward, Josh, will be when you when you get a little older, when you get forty six, and the nerves you know, aren't quite as good as they are when you're when you're twenty six and it's harder sometimes to uh to keep your focus and stay in there and especially with with conditions here. You know, Phil got a break as well. He was uh he went off late early, uh, which was a big advantage because the guys who, who went early late, that is the guys who teed off early on Thursday and then had a late wave today, really got the bad end of the deal. In fact I think we have um um, how many players do we have at, at three under? We've got quite a uh, quite a few here. As I look on the uh, on the leaderboard, I think we have 15 guys at three under or better. Every one of those players played in that late uh, early wave. So Phil got a break. The weekend, uh, you know, over here in Scotland, if anybody tells you they know what the weather's going to do, uh, they're lying because they don't. Uh, but the forecast tomorrow uh, is for some pretty gusty winds, uh, showers at time. And depending on when those come, you know, you can, you know, in, in this championship, you can really get get a bad, uh, you know, the luck of the draw can really go against you. And, and it easily could happen tomorrow to the guys in the afternoon. They could get the bad end of it and, and, and have the high scores and, and kind of fall by the wayside and have people, people pass them. So those two things, uh, I think, uh, could play against Phil Mickelson. And boy, he is, uh, he is playing, uh, played great golf the first two days. And, Gil, that's one of the reasons why I am – of the, of the four majors, I am always fascinated by the Open because it's the unpredictability. To me, it is the most exciting drama of all the golf tournaments. And I was kind of disappointed on the first day because it seemed like a very nice weather. And then when I was watching this morning, the coverage, I was like, oh, this looks like the British Open. There's actually wind and some rain going on here. Well, of course, this is our, going to be our first uh, first Open Championship broadcasting on uh, uh, the entire turn, entire event on uh, Golf Town, then here on NBC uh, in the weekend, starting at, at seven o'clock uh, here on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and and I think a lot of our folks are experiencing the same thing. I, I think you know variety is a spice of is a spice of life, and these days where you can get one day where you can go low and you can you can see lots of birdies and and see great things happen have somebody shoot a 63 and then you could you can turn around and 24 hours later you know you're having guys struggle to break break 40 uh you know on the end or nine um that happens uh here at this championship and and another thing too when you when you come over here and i uh, yeah, I would say for even if you're just a general sports fan and and you kind of like golf, but you want to kind of tick off your bucket list things to do in sports. You know, I think the three things in golf that you really would have to go see is you have to go obviously see a Masters, and and I think you have to to go see a Ryder Cup, and then I think the third one is you have to come over here and experience uh, this Open Championship because it's unlike it's unlike anything else. The atmosphere. In the in the spirit, there, there's a there's a spirit about this championship and being held on the on these 
you know what, what in sporting terms is is ancient ancient hollow turf you know hollow turf these uh these links golf courses that have been around for uh for, for more than a century and some some going on 150 years and, and they're uh it's really a, a special place and you can you can almost as you're walking on the turf kind of feel it you know feel it in your feet and come up through your body I want to ask you about some of the guys, different guys you move, made moves up and down. First, we'll start with Jordan Spieth. He barely survived the cut. He's at plus four right now. He hit 75 this round. Every time I've seen him, whether it's the live coverage or the replays, what is going on with his putting? It, it just seems like every time he putts, it just looks off. You know, there's uh, I'll say two things with, with with Jordan. And first of all, is the tee to green is is hurting him as well. I mean, he uh, he, he's really played poorly today, uh, tee to green, and and he's really been inconsistent this year with that that passive his game. You know, last year he, you know, his wedge shots and his short irons. I mean, he was always around the hole with a makeable birdie putt and, and and that happens and you get confidence to start rolling them in and so when you don't hit greens and you constantly put pressure on yourself to make putts that that becomes a big problem but the other thing too is when guys come over here and they're used to playing uh, PGA Tour greens which which are usually pretty smooth pretty true and, and pretty fast and usually running uh, on a stint meter you know 11 uh, 12, uh, et cetera, um, on a weekly basis. I um, mean, you come over here to this championship, and, and the, like the greens this week, I mean, they are perfect, but they're slow compared to what most of these players are used to. And so that takes uh, a little bit of an adjustment. And, you know, some guys, actually, when they come over, they do. They struggle with that. Uh, a couple of the guys who have stood out to me with their play so far. Cause like I said, to me, this is the one tournament I I am always into. Cause like I said, I, I always look forward to the craziness and the wildness. Uh, uh, the major jumps by uh, Henrik Stenson and Charles Schwartzel. I mean, they were uh, you know they weren't really considered to be guys who you thought were maybe going to do much after the first round, but then the second round. I mean, Schwartzel went for a 66, and Stenson had a 65. What uh, what do you think led to their turnarounds here? You know, th- th- this is a a course I think that really favors a guy like Henrik Stenson. And, and historically, let's look at this at Troon. Six consecutive opens here have been won by Americans. That that's uh, never happened, never even close to have happened before in any one course on this road of courses they play over here. And I think one of the reasons is this is it is almost like an American style golf course, kind of a tee to green. It really rewards ball striking. These are the smallest greens on the uh, on the open road. And now you're talking about even though he's not an American, but Henrik Stenson fits that prototype. I mean, he is. Uh, one of the top, you know, you can argue, three ball strikers uh, on the PGA Tour in the last last five years, uh, and I think uh, I didn't see the final stats, but at one point he was leading leading the field in greens in regulation uh, through 36 holes. And um, you know, for Hendrick, it's going to be kind of keeping that composure, maybe in the final couple of holes on on Sunday, and his putting and, and short game uh, can be suspect, but he's. One of those guys you look at and say, you know what, if, if he won a major, it wouldn't be a surprise. He almost is one of those guys you consider one of the best players to have and have won one. And, and considering the fact that no Swedish male players ever won a, a major championship, uh, it would be a huge story for him and a huge story for uh, uh, for golf and sports back in, back in Sweden. A couple of Americans who are uh, on the leaderboard right now, Zach Johnson and Dustin Johnson, not doing too bad. You would think that Dustin Johnson may have been playing a little bit better considering he's coming off the high of winning the last major. And Zach Johnson uh, doing another good job on the foreign course. I tell you, he is right there. I mean, he's right there at five under, and he played uh, played really well yesterday and, and hung in there today as uh, as toward the end of his round, the conditions started to uh, started to get worse. You know, he. he you, you, you win one of these. That's the other thing. When you win one of these these major championships, Josh, I, I think you get the sense that you're playing with house money. And, 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 and on the weekend, you've already won one. You have nothing to lose. And, and I think that takes a little bit of the pressure off of you. And so guys like 
like Zach Johnson, you know, he's sitting in a pretty good spot because you look at that leaderboard. You know, you have Mickelson there first. You have Zach Johnson, who uh, is currently in fifth. You have Schwartzel, T6, and then you go on down the list, and uh, Keimer, T11, and those are the only guys there in the top 15 right now who've won major championships. So, um, you know, I, I tend to look at those guys being able to rise to the top and and really not fading away as we as we continue. But as I said, it's a lot depends upon the weather, and, and, and if you get if you get called out there in in a bad hour or two of weather, uh, it can set you back a bunch on that on that leaderboard. And considering we've had uh, we've had a lot of guys make the cut, I think eighty one at four over uh, par. So you have all those guys within fourteen shots to lead, and man, that is a long way. But you know, it's golf, and you just you, you just never know if somebody gets hot and catches a break with weather, and other guys uh, struggle. Um, I, I definitely would not count uh, anyone out of this championship with 36 holes to play. We're talking with Gil Caps from the Golf Channel and NBC Sports. You can catch all the uh, action over on NBC this entire weekend, and also here on 97.3, we'll be bringing you the final round coverage here on 97.3 ESPN on Sunday. One of the guys on the list that stood out to me, during your guys' coverage, you guys showed a graphic about Sergio Garcia, about the fact that he is now climbing up the list of most majors started, and he still hasn't won one. He's tied for six overall. Will we ever see a day when Sergio does finally win one, or is it just always going to be out of his reach, kind of like a Lee Westwood? Uh, that's the uh, the million dollar question for for Sergio, just as it's been for other players. Uh, you know, that was a big question about Dustin Johnson, and and he, you know, finally got I think a break at the U.S. Open. You have to have some breaks go your way as well, Josh, to to win these things. And and I think like with the DJ, you know, he got a break that other guys around him weren't playing well, and that. Was, I'm not going to revisit that huge controversy about right. about that ruling as ball moving, but but I, I do think in a sense for him it wouldn't have been for almost any other player on tour, but for him that was an advantage, just the way he he operates and the way he thinks, and and I think he was able to put that out of his mind and just and and just play. Sergio, man, you know you hate to say somebody actually deserves something, but you know he's one of those players where. You know, I, I think he probably does deserve to win a major at some point. He, he's that good a player, and has been that good a player for 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 a decade and a half. Um, but but he's, you know, you, you got to fight those demons, and you got to be able to 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 come, you know, Sunday and late Sunday afternoon, uh, be able to to put a band aid over all that scar tissue uh, you may have, and make putts, and stay mentally tough, and, and maybe have a break or two. Uh, coming down the stretch, and and I think you know if, if, of any of the major championships, I think most people probably feel the British Open uh, would suit Sergio uh, the best um, to win. And so um, you know if he's there on Sunday, and if he winds up holding the track at the end of the day, it it wouldn't be a surprise uh, to anybody. But but I think that that there are dar- doubters out there still with with Sergio. Well, it wouldn't be a surprise. I think that. Uh, that Sergio uh, is going to have to prove something to uh, to get it done, but but he could. Gil, I really appreciate you joining me. I know it's very late over there. Before I let you go, I just want to know: Is there somebody who you know maybe's not in like the top five who you think can still make a run at this? Because with the weather you said coming on the way, you know we could see total chaos on the leaderboard here. You could see total chaos. You know, I the one guy that's got on the radar is Tony Finau there from the United States who. Uh, uh, who's quietly uh, at four under, and obviously my my pal Johnny Miller really thinks highly of Tony, knowing him from growing up uh, growing up in Utah. But you know, a couple other guys back there, uh, Matt Kuchar is kind of under the radar. Now I'm looking kind of just just at Americans, uh, you know, and Patrick Reed. You know, he's that guy sitting at two under, the guy who got the worst end of the deal of all those uh, of all those players who who played that that wave I was talking about uh, early late. You know, he and Rory McIlroy there, there at two under. Um, you know, they were the best, uh, the best of that of that wave. So, um, you know, one of those two guys uh, as well could 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 get it going. And they're uh, uh, they're only eight back. You know, and they're only 
uh, only five back of third place. So uh, that's, uh, that's not that far with, uh, with us being only at the halfway point. Gil, I believe it's, what, 10, 17 out there? It is. It is just that it's still not even uh, uh, not even dusk, to be honest with you. It's still light in the sky since wow. was about 20 minutes ago. And so, uh, uh, yeah, long days this time of year uh, in Scotland. And in stark contrast to uh, to six months from now when, when it will be very, very short days when, when sunset, as you know, uh, uh, a little before, uh, before 4 o'clock. Well I, appreciate, well, I appreciate you staying up to join us, and we look forward to the weekend of the British, and we'll be sure to check it out on NBC on TV. My pleasure, Josh. Thanks. Enjoy the weekend.